Hi everyone, I'm Cliff. I'm an Enochian practitioner and I'm just here to walk through um, a recent uh, innovation to the Enochian system that uh, I was um, inspired to receive by the Enochian angels. So this just, if you have already done Enochian or are already familiar with it, there will probably be at least a few things that are familiar to you but uh, definitely some stuff for the um for for you as well uh that that may be new to you um and definitely this whole setup is new um i also wanted to say if you're a beginner to enochian this video will have plenty of you for you as well i'm going to try to just walk through some of the basics of the system how it came about and that sort of thing very broad overview of, of the history just very brief, but also I'll be talking about um, the some of the parts of the system that um, have to do with uh, the how it was received. So just to get started, the Enochian system was delivered by uh, by the angels. Uh, if you, if that's a model you follow, I I, I do um, to John D, who was an advisor to Queen Elizabeth I. And uh, the, all of that transmission from the angels happened through his scryer, whose name was Edward Kelly. Um, so what would happen is um, Edward Kelly would actually look into a what's sort of like a prototype of what we can, would today call like a crystal ball. He would look through a, a stone called a, a shoe stone, which is sort of how they pronounce the show stone. It shows you stuff. So that, that's pretty much the basics of it. He would kind of go and look into it, see a vision, and then report what he saw, and John D. would write it down. Um, so what was the first part of the system? Well, the first part of the system, and I'm just going to flip this whole thing around here and try to show you. Maybe I can do this on the fly. So what was the first part of this Enochian system? Well, this is what the part of the system known as the Heptarchy. And it's kind of the equivalent of, uh, or the angelic counterpart perhaps to the English Heptarchy, uh, seven different kings, seven different kingdoms, mythologically united under uh, King Arthur or according to legend, united under him. Um, and as you can see, there were seven kings, but there were also seven princes, which I have sort of down here below, as you can see here. So seven kings and seven princes, and you notice that the let they all have a name starting with the letter B. And this it wasn't delivered in this um, as clean of a manner as I'm showing right now. There were actually, um, in addition to these kings and princes, there were also ministers. But I'm showing you this to get you a little bit into the uh, simple arithmetic that has to, that comes into play when it comes to some of the tools that you use when you're making uh, the when you're when you want to perform uh, any kind of Enochian vision work. But at any rate, you can see here that there are each one of them has a name starting with the letter B, and each one of them has a name that's seven letters long. Uh, but if you take off that letter B, uh, each one of them has six uh, letters left in their name. And it turns out that one of the first things you, that you make is a table with these names. And the table looks uh, like this. And it's got, you know, as you can see here, these are all actually Enochian letters. So this here is the letter B and then so on and so forth. You see all of these different Enochian letters here. And it turns out that there are actually 21 here. I tried to show this in this diagram here, but you get the idea. There's, you know, there's one, two, da, 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 down to 21. Okay, so if you look here, and I'm going to show you a little bit of what these other things mean here in a second. So I'm just going to go here really quickly to the end of the table. And when I say end, it me I mean that when I'm actually working, you know, can I use um, Lon Milo Duquette's method. And it's very simple. You just name off the name of the letter in the Enochian language. So this is the Enochian letter B, but the name in the Enochian for the letter is pa, but it actually mean it's actually pronounced b. You know, if you were to give it um, the the sound and what the sound makes, uh, a, a phenomic uh, equivalent of that or phonemic, excuse me. So at any rate, 
Uh, you can see here we have the letter B, and then we have L, N, N. These are these are the names in English. I'll, so this is or this is L. So I'll just I'll just pronounce the the English. I'll give you the English equivalent of this. So if you're to translator transliterate this is this is B L N N I A O, and it turns out that these are actually the same names of the kings. So these are the starts of the names of the kings. So you have B O for Bornogo, you have or excuse me um, Bobogel. And then you have BL for Blizdon, BN for Benapsin, BN for Benaspol, BI uh, or Y, this, this letter has can be either one uh, in Enochian. And this is BY for Binapur, and then BA for Babalel, and then BA for Baligon. So those are the names of the first seven. And if you actually go through the entire table here, you would actually get all seven of the king's names, uh, and all seven of the prince's names, you would just have to make sure to start with the letter B in order to get that. But the, you could, there's basically, they're kind of mixed up a little bit. Okay, so that's it so for this So I wanted part. to mention just really quickly before I move on is that uh, obviously seven kings and seven princes, if you were to add those up, that's 14. And if you were to take the last six letters of each name and do it this way, you would get 84. And just, just to reiterate that if you divide 84 by four, you get 21 letters per side, which is what you do. And then at the corner, you have that letter B. So all those 14 of those letters B just get reduced down to four, just to make it clean and simple. So the next part of the system was the watchtowers. So the, the first part that came through was that heptarchy that we just talked about. And then the second part was these watchtower tablets. And the whole idea is that the kings and the princes are associated with uh, planetary powers. So like the seven classical planets, this would be the sun, moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. So those were the seven that were visible back in John Dee's day. And they're still considered the major planets according to most uh, modern astrologers. Um, sometime, but um, you know, uh, Uranus and Neptune and Pluto, those aren't really visible without a telescope. You can make an argument for Uranus, but it's not always visible with a tele with it with the naked eye. But at any rate, so those are what those kings and princes are associated with, usually by people who practice Enochian and who notice like the kinds of powers that are associated with them and stuff like that. So that's pretty interesting, right? Pretty cool. But what I noticed uh, in the watchtowers is that there's this part of the system where it's not just um, uh, the actual, there, there are various angels associated with that that are kind of more associated with the elements. And I'll show you the watchtowers just really quick. Yeah, so here are the four watchtower tablets. This was, again, the second part of the system that came down to Dean Kelly, or no, excuse me, the third, excuse me. Yeah, this is the third. Second part we're not going to get into. It's just way too much for this video. Um, but you can see it. Uh, you can look at my previous video on Liber Loga and Jebbafall. Um, that one should be uh, should be there. And I, I, I literally only have three videos right now by the time I'm making this. So it should be pretty easy to find. Um, so at any, at any rate, this is like the third part of the system. So the first part, you have the planetary. And then here, these are more elemental. And these are like the classical elements uh, you know, from, you know, coming from like Aristotle. So we have fire and fire back in D's day was associated with the East. So this is like, this is actually East in my bedroom, but we'll, we'll go ahead and in my study here. Um, but it's actually this direction. And then we have air, which is associated with South and, uh, water. And then we have earth. Okay. So the four classical elements and the thing is, is that there are a lot of angels associated with this. So there's like an elemental fire king. And it's it's funny if you look at it, like here's letter B, A. I'll go ahead and zoom in here. So this has the letter B, A, T, A. Um, uh, maybe I'm doing this wrong. B, A, T, A. Yeah, uh, I, V, A, H. So that's, that's what happens here. So it's like a little spiral going in. Um, and so that would be like the elemental fire king. And then there are seniors. There are actually six per tablet. So there's right here, you can already tell the math here. So you got one, two, three, four uh, elemental kings right in the center. 
You have six of these seniors per tablet for a total of 24. There are also 64 um, additional angels associated with this uh, that have to do with, that have various powers associated with them. Uh, and then there are also, if you take the tablet as a whole, the, the great table, I should say, as a whole, like this, all four of these together, including like the um, Grand Cross. You can't really see that here. I've kind of made this 3D, but these are um, additional uh, names of God on here. They're also names of God, by the way. I should also mention that. So like right here where it says, that's Oro Iba Aus P. I've actually made, um, you can see right up here, I've made banners that are associated with that as well. That was one of the things that um, you were supposed to do if you were to do this. This is a lot. I'm not, I'm not expecting you to do all this. I'm just trying to give you an overview here. But at any rate, um, each one of these uh, tablets has a bunch of angels associated with them. So in addition to the kings, the seniors, some like I think 64 or so associated um, additional angels, you also have 91 governors, which are associated with the Aethers. But in addition to all of that is the part that I'm getting to here, which is about the Zodiacal Kings. So I'll get to that in just a second. Okay, so talking about Zodiacal Kings, well, what is he talking about? Well, these are signs of the Zodiac. So if you're into astrology, you, should, you would probably know that there are 12 signs in the Zodiac, and I have them listed here. I also have their little symbols associated with them. There, there are symbols associated with their glyphs. Um, and each one of these uh, in Enochian is related to a zodiacal king. And you can see here, you'll notice that there's a commonality, much like the heptarchical kings, uh, these kings also have, and the, and the princes, they also, these kings, these zodiacal kings also all have seven letter names, with the exception of one, and that's Levevoth here, okay? And We'll get back to that in a second, but you can sort of see if you if you're doing the math here like like I tend to do, you can already see that you have with the exception of this one letter and this this one by the way is associated with Capricorn um, but for the most part you have something very similar a similar setup to what you had with the original grade table, right you have twelve times seven equals eighty four so it's very simple to make. A very similar table to what we just saw, which is 21 letters to a side and then something at the corners. Now I decided to make, uh, I figured that it would be, you know, because the letter B in Enochian or Pa is, it's, is the Enochian name for it, is associated, is the, is the first letter of the Enochian alphabet. I figured that T, or I was inspired to, to understand that T might be as the last letter of the alphabet, would be a nice kind of way to cap that um, that table. And so that's what sort of emerged after all of that. So this is the beginning of the thinking about what so I was So one of the things I forgot to mention about those watchtowers is that I think that's where those um, zodiacal king names came from. So that the earth, fire, earth, wind, and fire, love that band, uh, and water, in this case, the all four, um, I'm pretty sure that the zodiacal king names are there. I haven't actually done that analysis. So if you have done the analysis or if you've seen it, if you're an Okian scholar or whatever, just uh, let us know in the comments um, because I think a lot of people are interested in that. So anyway, I think that's where, I think the letters themselves for those names actually come from that. Okay, so I already showed you this table already, just sort of the sides, but then I wanted to show you this part. So... This part is um, what, it, just for lack of a better term, I'm just calling this the zodiacal table. And as you can see, we already have, we have something very similar. And the color scheme should already kind of matches the, um, the watchtower tablets that you saw earlier. Apologize for the little glare here. Um, but all of these are basically following these sides here with these letters. And when I went to the print shop, I didn't quite get the ideal uh, level of quality. Uh, I blame myself. I thought about make, ordering a different one and the angel said not to do that. And I said, okay. So a little lesson in humility for me there. So at any rate, this basic idea of having the um, four sides uh, with the names of those zodiacal kings transliterated into Enochian letters, as you can see here, probably not too well. But at any rate, that's the letter van, so that would be, you know, and here's Gon, and here's the letter, the equivalent of A, that's Un, and so on and so forth. So that's how this 
came about. I also felt like um, there should be something at the corners here, and I wasn't sure what colors to use, but as you notice here, blue and red are the colors of the um, Enochian table. And I first made this table, you know, I, I made some mistakes and you know, what are you gonna do? But it's not, it's not the angels, of course, are overlook all that. So at any rate, that's, that was the basic idea. I also felt like the table, the sense I was getting is that the table should have this heptagram in the center, uh, as well as a heptagon even closer to the center. And we'll get to this uh, letter in just a moment. But this was the basic idea that first came to me. So why have this heptagram? Why? Well, the other thing that John Dee and Edward Kelly were told to do, uh, along with the heptarchy, so again, the first part of the system, they were told to make this thing. And I just sent a version of this to a dear friend. And there's, as you can see here, there's, there's a lot going on here, right? So I'll keep it simple. Um, but basically, there's the hepta, there's this very seven centric uh, thing going on here. So you have the, the hepta, heptagram, and then you have two heptagons. You have this big one on the outside, and then you have another one on the inside here, and so on and so forth. And there's just layers and layers and layers of letters here, each of one, one of which is associated with um, either an angel name or deriving from that. So clearly, there's something similar going on here. Well, what exactly is going on? Well, the first thing I realized is that what needs to be here in each of these triangles that make up the outside part of the heptag heptagram um, is it seemed to me that this whole thing, we've got the planetary with this heptarchy, with this outer table, and we've got the zodiacal here on the outsides of this table. And it seemed to me that the inside should also reflect, include um, the actual um, elemental part, okay? So if you are kind of looking at this closely or have stopped the video to study everything, uh, that's fine, but I can just tell you that these names that are here in these triangles are actually um, remixed versions of the names of God up here. So if you were to take the letters from here, you'll notice that there's three, four, five, three, four, five, so on and so forth. Again, they all come from the watchtowers. So three, four, five, three plus four plus five is 12. 12 times 4 is 48, right? We all learn this. So 48, but you notice that 7 doesn't divide into that evenly, right? It divides well into 49. And so I thought, hmm, what's going on here? So I already kind of had this inkling that something similar should happen here, which is what happens here in this outer heptagon here. So what is this? This is all like funny letters. Just give us give us the, the juice here. So the, it turns out that these outer letters are actually, um, this is actually the Enochian letter for Z and so on and so forth. And here's the letter R and H. And then here is M and G and so on and so forth. And it turns out that these are um, back in D's day, John D's day, this would have been the uh, archangels uh, that were associated with uh, the seven planets. So you have Tzavkiel, Tzadkiel, Kamael, Raphael, Haniel, Mikael, Gabriel. So Michael, Michael, Raphael, Haniel, uh, your, uh, uh, Michael, Raphael, Haniel, etc. Um, you know, uh, Zavkiel, Zadkiel, Kama El, which is like this angel associated with Mars, so on and so forth. So there are seven of them, right? That's kind of the big key. Again, seven is very important in Enochian, as you can tell from the heptagon and heptagram and all that. So, but it turns out that if you take all the letters in the way they were received, um, that 
there's a bit of a problem, and I'll just show this down here. So I, I've listed them off, and now here they are in English letters, so you don't need to worry about reading Enochian. And again, I sort of have pointed to this here, and I clearly prepped for this last night, and I uh, didn't do everything perfectly. But you see here, there's the same issue, right? You have Tzavkiel with eight letters, Zadkiel, comma, L, uh, spelled, you know, go ahead and make your jokes, but it's spelled C-U-M here, uh, uh, Haniel, Raphael, Miguel, Gabriel, okay? So this would be Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, uh, Venus, I kind of messed up the order here, uh, the Sun, Mercury, and then uh, the Moon. So there's 48 letters, but 7 times 7 is 49. So what the angels did is, right here at the very end, they put a cross. So that's not the letter T, that's a cross, okay? So, okay, so now we're cooking with gas, right? Because we have the same issue with 48 letters of Oro Iba Auspi, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I've, you know, you might see this as a C. It's the equivalent. Um, I don't, I'm not sure whether or not somebody definitively confirmed, okay, this should be a K or versus a C, but it's the same letter in Enochian, right? So I had arrangements with this. I, it's sort of like, okay, it seems to me it should be, if I were to remix this, that the, you know, I got, I got the sense that there should be different names based on these holy names of God, right? These uh, 12, uh, or uh, yeah, 12 names of God. Uh, so I wasn't sure. And I, kept, I sort of ran it by um, some magical friends of mine. I'm just going to go ahead and pause this and come back. So I ran some of this by some friends of mine in terms of like, what do you think? Is this, is this kind of working? What kind of energy are you getting off of it? Because I'm, I don't know everything. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I'm just the guy. Uh, so when I showed them like previous iterations, they said, mm, it's, there's something there. It's like I was at the start of something, but I wasn't quite there. So like uh, any uh, good, humble person does, uh, if, if, if you don't know it at first, you're not sure at first, and your friends aren't sure at first, that's when you really need to ask for divine guidance. So I went ahead and activated the um, furniture here, did the, the Holy Nokian ritual, and I talked to um, an eighth king, uh, eighth heptarchical king, whose name is Karmara, sort of the name flip can be also Marmara, like the sea in Turkey, I think it is. Um, but at any rate, uh, I asked him, okay, you know, what should I do? <laughs> and what should the, I, I, this is the sense I get, am I correct? And he's like, yeah, you, you should use those names of God, but you need to, you, you know, the, the question is the order. And he showed me what the correct order was. And, you know, Clearly, if you're into Enochian, you know, you're going to, this should not be something that is, oh, you know, he, he got the, he, yeah, I mean, people get revelations this way. So at any rate, um, the names of the god were as follows. So we have Omorphi, by the way, this is um, right to left, like Enochian usually is. And I'm not always perfect with this, but the angels know the difference. But anyway, this is Omorphi, this is uh, Ohapio, uh, Prozola, uh, Itediga, Tadgems, Calabria, and Facola. Okay, so these are these are also names, divine names. Okay, um, I'll just say that pretty clearly. And then here you notice the letter L. Okay, or the Enochian letter L, I should say, which is uh, its actual name is Ur, but it's it's the, it makes the L sound. Okay, so this is at the center. Well, why? Well. Um, one of the things that, uh, you know, clearly there's, if you've ever, uh, there, there's uh, um, multiple religious traditions where this idea of oneness and unity and all of that uh, are very important. And the name El, E-L, is a Semitic name for God or just a gener generic name for, for God, you know, the God of this, the God of that. So, you know, and you see this um, not only for in the name Elohim, but also in Canaan. Uh, the, I think the Canaans, Canaanites worshipped uh, a god named Baal, so on and so forth, right? And a lot of angel names have the last name of, e, you know, the suffix to their name, which is El. So it was clear to me that El should be in the center, not only because it's, it's unity and it's all of that, but also 
is missing letter L here. <laughs> That's reason this one stuck out stuck out like a sore thumb, and I said, ah, okay. So we're gonna it also doubles as that uh angel name, uh Lavevoth, that I just shortened to Avevoth, and then the L goes right in the center. Okay. So there's one last thing I wanted to hit on here. I'm not going to go over everything that's on the table here. Suffice to say that like these seals are associated with um, the heptarchical kings and their uh, ministers. Uh, but I wanted to mention to discuss a couple things, which is the Laman. And this Laman, if you're doing Enochian, um, ideally you'll you'll either have made or can, are able to afford, um, or at least can print out. I mean, I, I don't want you to feel like you can't do Enochian unless you actually have these materials. Um, on my website, enochian.today, I've gone ahead and made printable versions of almost everything except the SDA because that's hard to do in Excel. But at any rate, almost every other thing you could possibly want um, as far as an Enochian tool, it's right there and it's very cheap. I was, I'm, I'm fortunate to be able to afford this. And the angels, ideally, as, as you sort of are able to, you know, afford more or maybe are gifted stuff, this would be the sort of thing to try to keep your eye on and try to make happen. So it's kind of t tough to tell on account of like the, the sort of finish that they put on this. It's not a smooth finish. But you can see here that there are Enochian letters. And if you actually count all of these up, let me zoom out here a little bit. If you were to actually look at all of them, maybe at a better angle, if I were a better cinematographer here, but I'm not. I do not belong in Hollywood. Um, you can see here, like, this is letter Pa right here. That's letter, uh, or B, you know, this is O, this is B, I'm just using the English equivalents here, B, G, etc., and O. These are a bunch of Enochian letters, and it turns out that not only is are you supposed to have, like, this whole table uh, with the Enochian letters, but you're also supposed to have something um, hanging around your neck, and this is known as a Laman, L-A-M-E-N. And what the Laman does is it is supposed to reconcile you with the energy of the table, okay? So the table has its own energy, and the angel said, okay, we're going to also remix all these letters and give you a different version that you're going to wear around your neck. And the whole idea is that the table, according to the, the prayer that John Dee had, or maybe it was Michael who gave it to Dee and Edward Kelly, is that as the holy table conciliates heaven and earth, right, then the Laman is supposed to conciliate the practitioner and the audience, presumably, with the holy table. Okay, but now we have two tables. Well, it turns out that I, what, what I was basically shown um, is that uh, there's supposed to be, uh, you, can use, you can create another Laman just following the exact same order. If you like go through the painstaking process of going through each letter, and which one is associated with kings and da 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 and the heptarchy. You can do the same thing for the zodiacal table that you did for the planetary table here, and that's what this is. And uh, I'll go ahead and uh, put the um, link to whoever uh, to the shop. I don't have that off the top of my head right now, um, but I'll put the link to them. They they were very nice. Uh, I just you know I spent the money. I splurged a little bit. This is you know it's not cheap, um, but it's not it won't cost you an arm and a leg either. You just got to save up for it. But what I did is I did the exact same thing. And the only, you know, questionable or maybe problematic thing, and maybe I should have been more specific to be careful about this, but they did a good job according to my specifications. Really, it's it's on me for not being more specific, but it's it's going to be just fine because you can see this letter G. I mean, don't get me wrong. They're, they're getting five stars. I would give them five plus stars because this is very nice. Um, but you get the letter G, D, and I decided to put the L, just like I put it in the center here, I put it in the center here. And that was the way that was kind of shown to me that, hey, this is the way it is. And, and the no, these letters are clear. It's pretty obvious which ones they are, right? If you know Enochian you know, you know, letters, this is pretty obvious. So this follows the exact same format as this, the exact same order as this. The only difference is instead of starting you know, in the names of the uh, uh, planetary kings and princes, you instead just stick with the uh, seven, uh, or the 12, excuse me, uh, uh, zodiacal kings there. So, okay. okay, so like this is all the what, the what, and the how, and the what, and the how. 
Now the question is why, <laughs> or what are you going to use this for? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the angels what they think is a good idea to use with this and, and ask for their guidance. I, again, I'm just a guy. Um, uh, the first thing I would, so that would be my suggestion, right? Is to ask them what you think is important. But that said, um, clearly, if you know astrology, you know that the planets move around in their cycles. And you can tell a lot by knowing which planet is where. If I were to just show you a blank, um, a, a chart without any information about when, you can actually use a software program to find when certain planets were in certain signs, right? So one of the things you could possibly use this for in, in, in conjunction with the heptarchy is ask information about a specific place and time. And the angels may be able to show you that. That would be one idea, right? Another would be to generally try to reconcile yourself with your entire zodiacal chart because all 12 signs are in everybody's chart, right? If you're doing, if you're doing astrology and also you might, um, be able to, uh, ask the angels to give you a certain influence, or they may guide you to ask for a certain influence that is outside of your current time. So, what would that mean? Well, for example, right now, uh, Jupiter and Venus are both in the sign of uh, Pisces. And those are both really good placements. You know, just straight up say that. Um, because Jupiter and Venus, uh, Jupiter rules the sign of Pisces. It's, it's a, by domicile. It's a domicile, uh, has domicile power in Pisces. And that's considered, Jupiter is considered the greater benefic. So you get, ooh, even more energy. You know, he's, he's, he's at home. You know, if we're going to give assign genders to the planets, right? Jupiter's at home in Pisces. So he has all of his resources there. And he's a benefic. He's a greater benefic. So he get, brings good things. Definition of a benefic. And that's kind of what you're expecting is, okay, that would be great. And that's what you would want. Uh, Venus in Pisces, Venus is actually considered exalted. So it's not quite at home, but almost like an, like an honored guest, right? And Venus is uh, considered the other benefic, the le maybe a little lesser benefic, but it really, I'm not going to get too into that. But the point is, is that that's the kind of influence you would like to have. So right now, today, you know, in 20, early, you know, early, almost mid 2022, April 22, the nice thing about having both of those together is that they are, um, they're, they're both in a very strong sign and they're approaching a conjunction. So if you look up in the sky and you were to find Jupiter and Venus, you'd see that they were very close together in that sign. And that's supposed to bring like good things. That's what you want, right? So the reason you would use these, this kind of table though, is not to say, okay, right now things are really good. So I'm going to like try to get that energy and like lock it in by a talisman or by asking the angels to please, you know, do your thing and please make sure that this energy that is here today, please make sure that stays with me. Instead, you would use this kind of table to please, to, at, to request the angels to please bring me the benefic energy of Jupiter in Pisces anytime you ever want it, Okay. So that would be like another good idea that you could use that for. So this is these are just ideas. I'm sure that people in the comments may have a whole bunch of other ones, but I wanted to um, lay out the rationale for this. Um, another thing that I should mention is that uh, the Zodiac in Hermeticism is considered to be um, kind of a... Uh, more, it's it's considered more divine or the, the, the fixed stars, which is to say what we would today just call stars, you know, not the planets. They're considered, um, the, in Hermeticism, they're considered a little bit more divine because they're fixed. You know, they don't, they very ba barely move. They, you know, scientists nowadays, of course, they know, oh, it's actually moving very fast, but relative to us from here on earth, the, the, if you look up in the sky, other than the rotation of the earth and all of that, and the sidereal motion and et cetera, et cetera. Um, if you were to look at the appropriate spot each time, 
the star does not move that much, very little, right? There's slight movement according to precession, but for the most part for us, you know, here on Earth, the movement is extraordinarily slow. And, you know, there's a whole idea in Mithraism that Mithraism may have been uh, a mystery cult that came out of the recognition and it was so mind-blowing that they had to make like this esoteric cult, right? That um, the stars themselves actually moved and we need to, we need to somehow, you know, grapple with this mind-blowing thing, right? So at any rate, um, just keep that in mind in, in the sense that like I've went ahead and, um, when I, when I've done workings with this, like this printed off version of the table, clearly it's printed off, right? Um, when, when you're activating with that and when I was, when I was activating the table just before this video or that printed off table, what I found is that the energy even for somebody who's gone through all of like what is considered like the, the Enochian system and some pretty, pretty high level stuff, the, just the activating of this furniture for the first time with the proper, like I, I had printed off the um, table, but I had not really made the lamen and having both of the, or, you know, purchased a, a, a made version of the lama, lamen, having that now and going through and the activation of that, by the way, if you activate the table, I went 12 rounds instead of seven, like a, which is what Ducat has, but I went 12 rounds just because, you know, 12 signs of the Zodiac, 12 Zodiacal Kings. All of this is to say that the energy coming up off of that, it's pretty high. It's um, even, even for somebody pretty experienced, it was like, oh, this is, <laughs> this is more than I expected. So um, just keep that in mind if you uh, decide to work with this. And, and I'm speaking as somebody who's I'm not going to say I'm the most experienced, but I'm I'm fairly experienced. So just be prepared. Um, that's not to say I'm going to discourage you from doing this. Um, I actually think that this is probably um, going to open up um, some interesting energies for the end user. Uh, I'm go my first goal with this is to try to. Um, help a couple of friends out who have been uh, having some problems and just ask the angels what can be done um, and see which uh, zodiacal angels may come forward with this or that, offering this or that for different people. So I'm going to be doing a lot of heavy work with this, uh, but I, all of this was just waiting for like the Laman to come in and all of that. So if you have questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'm going to um, the, I'll, I'll definitely recommend like some beginner intro books uh, in the comments to know the history. Cause I'm, that's probably what most of you are like, you know, I'm, I'm thinking like 90 to 99% of you are like, what is this guy talking about? Where does all this come from? This is not enough information for me. And that's fine. You know, I don't expect you to, I don't, I, if I were to teach Enochian to, to folks, it would, I, I've thought about this and I, I think it like probably one week at, and maybe, and, and most likely two uh, weeks, it would take me to just go through, do the entire data download. Um, and uh, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have time for that. Not yet anyway, not, not unless there's this huge demand, right? Um, so at any rate, but feel free to leave your, que your questions in the comments anyway. I may not an answer you directly, but I will easily direct you to a book that I consider to be valid, that I consider to be um, helpful to you, um, or at least that was helpful to me and that I consider to be, you know, very high quality. I'll leave those um, in the comments and probably a little bit, uh, possibly a little bit in the description. I'll definitely leave Lon Duquette's book in there. Um, so anyway, so this is the long wind up. What is this whole thing about? Why is he describing this? Well, I, I, the reason I'm going into the such detail just to reemphasize this is that this is not received. So this is this is neo Enochiana. This is this is um, this is not the original transmission, but this is something that you know I, I I do try to help advance stuff. People who are already working with systems to see what else could be gained and try to help them in their journeys. It may not be for them, uh, but I do want to at least try to make it available. 
So with that said, I'm going to uh, go from current state. I'm going to trans out prob possibly channel and put that up later uh, today or um, if not today, then uh, I may channel on Saturday or something like that. First time channeling, uh, first time uh, recording that, and I'll let you know. Um, well, you'll see it if it's if if I post it. So at any rate, um, thanks so much for watching. Um, again, my name is Cliff. I run. Uh, I I'm the proprietor of Enochian Today, um, and thanks so thanks so much for watching.